Ever since I started to work with these ESP Wi-Fi modules, I always wanted to build a smart Wi-Fi socket that enables me to control my AC loads wirelessly through my smartphone. While products like these are already available in the market like this popular Moco Wi-Fi smart plug or Gozon Mini Wi-Fi plug, they are a bit expensive and on top of that it doesn't give you the joy of building your own. So, in this video, I'll show you how you can build your very own smart plug using ESP8266. As you can see here, the device that we built can easily be plugged into any existing AC socket and then on the other end, you can connect the actual load simply by plugging it into the socket on our device. After that, just keep the main switch of your socket always on and you can control your load directly from your smartphone. Fun, right? So let's get started. The purpose of this project is to turn on or off my Wi-Fi router by just using the smartphone directly from my workstation. Because at times my internet connection goes down and when I call my customer care, the standard answer that I get is, So, I'm sorry for the inconvenience cost. Please restart your router by turning it off and then turning it on again after a few seconds. Oof. Tired of walking my way to the router every time, I decided to build the smart plug and control my router using it. With the plan made, I pulled out my ESP8266 Wi-Fi module, the FTDI programmer and my Arduino Wi-Fi shield. Now for people who are not familiar with this Wi-Fi shield, click on the i button on top right corner of the screen to know more about this board. Or you can follow this circuit diagram which will help you to connect your ESP8266 with your laptop and program it using FTDI module. People who have this Wi-Fi shield can directly plug in your ESP and your FTDI programmer to the shield and then using your programming cable connect your FTDI board to your laptop. With that done, your ESP is now connected to your computer and you can program the ESP8266 module with the Arduino IDE. Just launch the Arduino IDE and the program would be something like this. Initially, we include all the header files required and also initialize a DNS server. Followed by that, we have our HTML code here, which actually defines the web page that would appear once you get connected to the ESP module. The web page will have three main screens. One would be the home screen and the other would be the on screen. You can also see how the screen would actually appear on the right side and the last screen would be the off screen. With that being defined, we get into the setup function of our code inside which we define GPIO2 pin as the output pin for controlling our load. Followed by that, we tell that the Wi-Fi connection that we established will be called as ESP smart plug and we tell that by default we should be taken to the home screen. Then we have the code which tells if the turn on button is pressed, the GPIO2 pin should be made high and the LED should be turned on. Similarly, if the turn off button is pressed, then the GPIO2 pin should be turned low and the LED should also be turned off. That said, this is pretty much the code for our project. With that, the code is done. Let's upload the code to our board. The complete code along with the library files can be downloaded as a zip file from our website. Link for the scene is given at the description. Now that our code is ready, we can upload it to our ESP module by simply clicking on the upload button and then wait for the code to be uploaded. People who do not have this board can use the circuit diagram shown earlier to upload the code. Once the code is uploaded, search for Wi-Fi networks on your phone and you should find a signal named ESP smart plug. Connect to it and you will be taken to a web page that we designed earlier. Here, when you press the turn off button, you should notice the LED on our ESP board turning off and when you press the turn on button, the LED should turn on again. After verifying the code few more times, we will no longer need the programmer board for this project. Now, we have to build a circuit to power our ESP module directly from the mains voltage and use its GPIO pin to toggle a relay. To build this circuit, I used an AC to DC converter module from Highlink which converts the AC mains voltage to 3.3 volt DC with an output current of 900 milliamps sufficient enough to power up the ESP module. On the output side, we have a 3.3 volt relay which can be controlled by the GPIO pin of the ESP through a transistor like this BC547 NPN transistor 
we will also need a 1k resistor to limit the base current of our transistor. The complete circuit diagram for our project would be something like this. The AC mains to power our project will be obtained through this plug. The other components on the circuit diagrams are the ones that I already explained. With the circuit diagram ready, I planned on how to solder these components by keeping the board size as small as possible so that it fits inside a small casing. Then I pasted the schematics to my workbench, turned on my soldering rod, cleaned it and began soldering. Once the soldering work was done, I noticed that I missed a small pull-up resistor which has to be added to the GPIO pin which I did later. With my board done, it looked something like this. Next, I measured the dimensions of the board using my vernier and also measured the dimensions of the plug and the socket to design a casing for my smart plug. My design looked something like this once it was done. After I was satisfied with the design, I exported it as an STL file, sliced it based on the printer settings and finally printed it. Again, the STL file is also available for download from the website and you can print your own casing using it. done, I was quite satisfied with the result. Then I proceeded with adding the wires to my board and also screwed them to the power terminals and the socket. With the complete connection made, I assembled the circuit into my casing and everything was nice fit as you can see here. With my smart plug ready for action, I went to my router, traced its wire to find its adapter, then I removed it from the socket and connected the smart plug to the same socket and turned it on. Now I plug the adapter back to a smart plug and like that I can hear of the control it from my phone. In the same way you can control any low power AC load in your home and have fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. If yes, click on the like button and also subscribe to Circuit Digest for more such videos and awesome projects. Thank you.